Hey guys, welcome back. This is in mass and we come back to the formula and simultaneous equations. So here is the part two and formula rearrangements. You will see real shortcuts how to rearrange the formula efficient and less time consuming. So that will be really efficient ways and I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. You will give only the benefits from this channel, no negatives, definitely. All right, and we go back to formula rearrangements. So first of all, I'll just give a brief definition of what it is and what needs to rearrange the formula. That simply means that you have a target value that you want to put as the subject. Let's consider an equation of a straight line. Let's say it's 3x plus 2, and you want to make x as a subject. So in this case, in this, in this given formula, just simply need to say that what x equals to. So that's what is called rearrangements. Basically, make your target variable from the formula expressed through another variables in this formula. In this case, you have only y and x. You simply have only two variables. And where is your target? Your target is x. So somehow you need to rearrange the formula or literally say to rewrite the formula in order to get x equals to something. In this case, basically it's almost the same as attempt to solve an equation, but without any calculations, okay? That's what it means. Okay, guys, let's try to do it very quick. So what I see, the first fast track, if you see it's pretty like straight line equation. So what are you gonna do? You transfer to here, you have expression y minus 2, and then you need to solve for x. Basically, you divide by 3. And that's it. That's the whole rearrangement. So you transfer 2, you've got y minus 2, then you divide by 3, and that's your x. So normally, you'll get first x on the right side because it stays initially here. So that's why you'll get y minus 2 over 3. But it doesn't matter. So you can simply swap the parts of the equation and write as what you intended to do. Okay, what if you have more complicated? Let's say that was the first example. So let's have a look at more complicated when you have like fractional equations and that's typical and makes more troubles for students. All right, so let's get it to y over three minus x equals, let's say five. Yeah, in this case, it's a fraction one, so make sure you watch the video about how to resolve fractional. But I give you a quick tip how to do this if you're new here. All right, so first of all, you just simply rewrite your equation as truly fractional, so it means you arrange two fractions, even if on the right side you just have one number. Okay, now you've got truly fractional equation. And what are you gonna do right now? So I just want to say that you swap 3 minus x with 5, that's the general way, because finally you need to stay with x equals, as in the previous one. So that's why, first of all, you need to lift up your 3 minus x on top. So basically, you don't need 5 here, so you put it down. What about y and 1? So you can skip 1 as well. So in this case, if you swap with 5, you'll get... 5 over 5, because you swap 5 and 3 minus x. And on the right side, you will have 3 minus x over 1, or literally say just 3 minus x. Okay, so where is your subject now? Where is your candidate for expression? It's minus x. What are you going to do? Because you have minus x, you transfer it back and swap with y minus 5. So you just swap them. Okay, that's the way. And what do you say? You have x equals to 3 minus y over 5. Don't forget when you transfer through an equality sign, you need to swap the sign into the opposite. It was minus x, so when transferred to the left-hand side, it becomes positive x. When you have y over 5, you transfer and it becomes negative. This is the way and it's already done. What about more complicated involving different like powers, different roots? Okay, let's consider this one when you see the power. Let's say z over 1 minus x squared is, is equal to, let's take, a over b. 
So here we've got one, two, three, four variables. All right, so you need to express, let's say, x. So in everywhere, in every single example, you need to make x as the subject. So make s as the subject. All right, so let's try to do this. So you have power, so you need to detect where is your target variable. It's right there. But you cannot split and <clears throat> separate from one, from one, right? So first of all, you consider the whole expression as target. So what are you going to do? You have a fractional one. So do the same as in the previous one. So it's fractional, so you swap 1 minus x squared with a. So it goes up, a goes down. So what about z and b? b goes to z. Because finally you need to left with 1 minus x squared on the right side alone. So what are you doing? You put a quality sign and say, okay, we've got 1 minus x squared. And on the left hand side, we've got z times b, because b goes on top and a goes down. Okay, you swap. Next one, next step. Your target variable is right there. What are you going to do? Because it has minus, so potentially you need to have x equals. So you transfer it right there. And all this fraction you transfer to the right hand side. So you've got x squared. Now it's positive because minus before. It was before. So on the right side, you've got 1 minus z b over a. And because you have x squared, but you want to have x alone, what are you taking? You're taking right the square root. So you're taking the square root of both sides. And it's going to be x equals to square root of the right side because x on the left hand side was in square of power t when applying square root according to index form or just you know taking square root of x squared will give you x however hold on should we put plus minus yes of course because you understand that when you take x squared equals one the solution is going to be here plus and minus square root of one literally say it's plus or minus one why you take a minus as well? First of all, quadratic equation, two solutions. That's the first. The second one, the second reason. If you square up negative one, it will be positive one. So that means you came to the answer one. So that's why in this case, you need to have plus or minus one. All right. For this reason, you also need to express in the same way. However, if you have some restriction, let's say if you're given only that x, is more equal than zero no problem you just eliminate negative square root of the expression and leave only positive okay that's the answer that's the answer and that's the ways how you can rearrange the formula in the next video i'll give you several examples how to do this on given questions gcc and igc style questions hope you like that don't forget to subscribe you would get definitely benefits and you will be tuned up on a daily basis. That was Daniel Dallas. Thank you guys. Peace.